So today's pain is tomorrow's gain. So I come from tragedy and sadness in life to constantly embracing challenges and adventures. I worked my way up across the insurance industry over the past 25 years to taking a career break and swimming with dolphins. I grew up in a small village, neatly nestled into the shores of the Baltic Sea, to building the foundations of Tesla's European insurance venture. And I experienced numerous, and people I tell you numerous, disappointments, rejections, and failures in life. But to constantly reinventing myself through them, and actually being surprised about the potential in me. And so that's how it goes, that today's pain is tomorrow's gain. I like what Kyoko said, because truth be told, I have exaggerated a little bit. Maybe I didn't grow up in a small village. Actually, it's more appropriate if I say it was a long stretch of road. Our neighborhood were eight people, maybe 10 dogs, and numerous more cows. But it was idyllic. I loved it. I mean, I was small. I loved it. It was idyllic. I enjoyed it. Yet, it was a strange place to live in and to grow up in. Many people tried to escape unsuccessfully. Yet, for me, for me, it was a place where Nutella didn't exist. Bananas and oranges were fruit for Christmas, and we had, to, we had, a, we had a tremendous choice in yogurt, plain or plain. <laughs> there was a time. And others again, for them it was an iron curtain. It was a communistic regime. It was a communistic oppression. That's how growing up in Eastern Germany was. And so aside of the fact that many tried to escape unsuccessfully, others again disappeared mysteriously. But then again, for me it was idyllic. I had my friends across the road, I had the Baltic Sea to swim in. It was fantastic. But I wouldn't be here if I would only talk about sad things. So sometimes, once again, you find yourself in circumstances beyond your control, beyond your doing. And the Soviet Union collapsed, the communistic regime disappeared, and actually the two Germanys reunited, and without even knowing because I was too young. But there they were, adventures, chances, opportunities, they were there for me to grab, for me to take and to live, and a book of life to write. It felt like an eternity. But when I finally turned 16, I didn't hesitate. I didn't really hesitate for a moment, and I took up the opportunity to move from that road, from that long road that I grew up in, to the big city. I moved to Berlin, and I'd started a vocational training. It was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. And for all of you who know that, I mean, being 16, getting out of school, starting for the first time to earn money in your life, to walk on your own, to experience happy hours and parties, that is fantastic. It's really enjoyable. Anyway, um, so it was, it was super nice. It doesn't mean that we didn't experience sadness. It doesn't mean that we as a family, we didn't experience tragedy. My father had a second cancer and he surpassed it, so that was good. My mom, though, she also had a heart surgery, passed it, it was also good. But you know what happens, the problem, the challenge, sometimes the challenge sometimes is knowing. So we knew, we knew when something was brewing on the horizon. We knew when something dark was actually coming. And we knew because we felt that this darkness, this darkness that was coming is, will be ever consuming. And the reason for that was the darkness that I'm talking about, my brother's cancer, Andreas's cancer, that was a different type of cancer than the one we had experience with from my father. As a matter of fact, it was a rare type of bone cancer. And well, how, how does it go in these circumstances? You go for treatment, you have bone removal, you have some surgery. Yet the outlook was still dim. I mean, can you make sense of something like that? I couldn't. I honestly couldn't. I mean, how can you make, as a 16-year-old chap, I mean, how can you start to make sense of that? How can you 
wrap your head around that? How can you understand that? Andreas and I, I mean, we were just so fresh on that road of life, so new on that journey of life. And there I was, I mean, I was wrapping up my vocational training and Andreas, instead of wrapping up something, he was starting something uncomfortable, treatment. There I was, experiencing, I told you about the happy hours, experiencing happy hours, ups and downs, the, the summer of 99. I, I can still sense the tickling of the sun on my skin. But obviously the happy hour that Andreas experienced was a different one. And there I was, given the opportunity, given, blessed with the opportunity of having the chance to choose between taking up a job in Dublin or taking up a job in Frankfurt. And the only thing my brother was able to choose between was to take up a chemo in this city or in that city. Andreas and I were always good brothers, and I'm sure either many of you have brothers or sisters, and you know probably the feeling is like you are not overly close, yet at the same time, you're a good family. You have a good brotherhood, um, you are complicit together, you do your things together, you are proudly catching each other when the one is falling. Even though I tell you a secret, because Andreas was older, so most of the time he was catching me. But we proudly went our ways. We proudly went our ways and proudly made our mistakes. But so when I get closer to that moment, to that decision, whether to take the one or the other job. When the time started to make pressure in my neck, Andreas knew me. I mean, he reached out to me, he took me under his wing and he's, he encouraged me. He said to me, Martin, is like, I mean, why are you hesitating? I can see that you want that. I, can, I know you. I mean, I can see the, the spirit, the excitement. I can see that the eagerness, the trembling in your knees to start taking that job. Boy, was I relieved. Eh? I mean, I didn't have to take a choice. I didn't have to choose. But yet, of course, I mean, something was still haunting me. I, I didn't want to leave him alone, but I felt better. But I even felt better with a very big surprise because Andreas organized the entire trip. I couldn't have been more blessed with that brother. And to my even bigger surprise, and not only mine, actually also my parents, and against all recommendations, he even booked the trip for himself to accompany me. To accompany me, to send me off, to give me the opportunity not to go out alone, not to go out alone into a new life and a new adventure. I must have, I must have waited heavy on him. Seriously, I mean, continuing treatment, going through that. But in not a second, in not a single moment, not a single lack of the journey, I saw pain, doubt, or anything else on his face, anything else that could indicate that he was going through treatment. Actually, on the contrary, because the moment we arrived in Dublin, the moment we stepped foot on our beloved land of the leprechauns and the Guinness, all I saw, all I saw was happiness, happiness, a smile, but even more, pride, pride, sparkles in his eyes, curiosity about exploring the world, about going out and going against all odds, going against all odds, against all recommendations and showing the world that you can do it. As it is, sometimes life grabs you by surprise. And so I remember that Friday afternoon we were, I was actually more, I was wrapping up the day in the office. Um, I was putting papers in a drawer. Yes, we were still using papers at that time. Sorry about that. Um, but we had mobiles. So my phone rang. My phone rang and um, I don't know, somehow, somehow I knew, I, I felt it. And I answered, my mom was on the phone and she told me that Andreas passed away. He passed away the night before, surrounded by his parents, but in his bed. I will never forget that moment, obviously. I will never forget the heaviness that that moment put also on my shoulders. Um, and all honesty, also the, the sadness not to have been with him on these last steps of the journey, on these last 
lacks and moments in his life. But somehow I also felt at peace. I also felt at ease because somewhere in the back of my mind, somewhere deep down in my heart and my soul, I knew actually that was also the reason why Andreas accompanied me, why he organized the entire trip so that he can say goodbye to me and not only leave me, but that he can say goodbye. But it will always stay with me. That excitement, that curiosity, that eagerness to go out into the world, to make mistakes, but to explore and to learn. That is something that will always stay with me. And so my adventurous spirit came back. And the summer after Andreas passed, I decided to embark on a new journey, on a new road. And I decided to move to Spain. I enjoyed life. I enjoyed love. I uh, met Edward, my future husband. We enjoyed life. We had the opportunity to move to Paris, to move to Cologne, and to continue to grow personally on my side, to grow obviously professionally as well, to continue exploring new opportunities, to master new tasks, to master new challenges. So there it was. There was that Sunday morning, and and I couldn't sleep. So I remember I was, I was reading an article and I saw an, art, an interesting job posting in the article, kind of. And um, I thought, hey, that's, that's nice. Let's do that. Let me twist and tweak a little bit my CV uh, and let's send it off. It was the beginning of an opportunity for Edward and I to move to Malta, to move to the Mediterranean, to the sun. So there we were. The opportunity to move to an island in the Mediterranean. And boy, for me, the opportunity to work for Tesla, to build their European insurance venture. Boy, was I excited. Was I excited to change the world, to innovate and move even to disrupt an established insurance market, to disrupt the establishment. If you ask me, I will always enjoy that. I will always love the opportunity to walk around the neighborhood for the first time, to explore what's going on to open the door to your apartment for the first time. It's, I think that's super exciting. And as exciting, actually, as it was for Edward and I, as passionate and as dedicated we were, so much dedication and passion I also experienced with the team that we brought on at Tesla. We were there to make things happen, to move forward, to change the world. But it's not always so easy. And as much as we enjoyed that, as much as we started to set foot in that fantastic country, in that fantastic place, as much about a year, one and a half years into the adventure, the question marks grew. The doubts were starting to haunt me. The worries kept me up at night. What was going on? I had the feeling the project stalled. I had the feeling we didn't receive the resources that initially we were committed to, but where we needed approval for, I had the feeling we were not really on the expected track. So what do you do? You reflect, you think, but you always continue to have these kind of conversations in your mind. So I reached out to friends, I reached out to mentors, I spoke obviously to Edward at home what to do. Well, at the end of the day, the decision, the, the next course of action, it will always stay with you. But I knew something had to change. I knew we had to talk. I knew also as my responsibility as a leader, we have to face tough conversation. We have to take stock. We have to look at what's going on. So there we were. Let's take the energy. Let's have the conversation. Let's face the establishment. Let's maybe take the step to disrupt the establishment. So we had the conversation. I spare you the details, but we agreed on creative differences. I was more creative, they were a little bit different. The next conversation then lasted 12 minutes. Ah, and then I was walking home. Ah, blue sky, sun, ah, super nice. Water, all there. Once I arrived home, I sat down, Edward to my left, Paka to my feet, and nothing in my hands. Nothing in my hands other than a message out of my mouth to say, basically, essentially, I'm unemployed. But strangely, strangely, actually, I, I felt excited. I actually felt excited. 
Because I have the impression for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, I truly understood what it means to stand up to your values. So thank you, mom, for always teaching me and telling me to stay true to myself. Um, and I couldn't help but feeling lost, actually, also in the paradox of the corporate career environment. You advance, you have an ambition, you advance on the career ladder, you advance on the corporate side, but then you have to change and to adapt again. And I couldn't help but wonder as well, what is actually the impact? What's the point of all of this? What's the mark that I'm leaving on this world? But for the first time as well in my life, I had the opportunity to take a step back, to reflect on these questions, to think about exactly that road ahead and what I want to do and where I want to go. So I took the opportunity to swim with dolphins. I made the best out of the situation. I trekked with camels through the Israeli desert. And that's why my professional life today brings me to the crossroads of public-private partnerships, brings me to the opportunity to combine the power of public organizations and private institutions to tackle systemic risks, to tackle some of the biggest problems the world sees today. Migration, poverty traps, biodiversity, and violence against women and girls. And all of this at the intersection of insurance. And this adventure brought me to Amsterdam. And I'm really looking forward to experience what that city has to offer, what Edward and I can look ahead. I can't help but being excited about what's to come. Because I look at my left, and there, I, there it is, there, there I see, as if it was yesterday. Andreas and myself embarking on that train, embarking on the journey of life, taking the opportunity to look and try and to explore. For the first time, actually, I think I realized that was the beginning of the quest of who I want to be. And I looked in front of me and I saw 25, okay, actually 40, 40 years passing in front of me like flashes. And that's why I can't help but be excited when I look to my right and I try to look at the future. That's why I can't help but be excited and curious about what the road holds. Because this is also the life I choose. Because this is also who I want to be. It's also who I am. Because my life's journey has taught me that yesterday's pain, yesterday's pain, is today's gain. <laughs>